why are industrial cultured humans unable to tolerate silence and therefore unable to get the benefit from silence? When I believe that silence and downtime is when confronted with silence and downtime, one gets confronted with oneself. And if one does not, is not comfortable with oneself, or if one is not, does not like oneself, one does not want to be confronted with oneself. And so silence becomes intolerable. We, we attempt to move faster and faster and to distract ourselves more and more dramatically in order to avoid facing who and what we have become. I think that's part of it. And I'm reminded also of a line, I believe this was Joseph Campbell who said that people of all ages prior to, to, to today understood that for someone to have anything approaching a spiritual life, that leisure was one of the first components, by which was not meant the leisure to play golf or to play computer games or to have various distractions, but instead the time to sit and the time to do nothing. You know, one of the reasons, I was having a conversation with Terry Tempest Williams gosh, 10, 12 years ago, in which I was saying to her that one of the reasons that I can write so much now is because I spent all my 20s doing nothing. And she very kindly chastised me for saying that that was doing nothing. Because the truth is what I was doing is I was figuring out who I was and I was gathering. Just like before you jump, you have to drop your weight down a little bit and sort of cock your knees. And just like before a baseball batter swings the bat, he will cock the bat. You know, that it's the same with that, that before I could move forward with the work that I do now, I had to figure out who I was and where, what was my relationship to the world. And I had to take a lot of time to vomit up the effects of a coercive upbringing. And I had to vomit up the effects of coercive schooling. And I had to, and that takes time. That, you know, I have Crohn's disease and there have been times when I have been deathly ill. And after being deathly ill, I don't, well, for example, when I was 20, 24 or so, I, almost died. I, I was very, very ill. I was down to less than 120 pounds. Um, my mom says I was below 100, but I don't know if it was 100 or 120, but it was, I, was, I was very skinny, six feet tall. And I very nearly died. I passed out from loss of blood. I very nearly died many times. And when I got out of the hospital and when I got home, my, my, my room was on the second floor of a house. And when I got home, I was so weak that I, could not, I couldn't walk upstairs. I, had to, I literally had to crawl up the stairs. And of course, it didn't occur to me to just sleep downstairs. And my first walk a few days later, my first walk out in the neighborhood, I was able to walk to the street and then walk like two houses down and then I was exhausted. And then I walked home. And I would get really frustrated at how slowly I was healing and my mom kept saying to me again and again, one of the smartest things she's ever said to me, which is it took you a long time to get sick and it will take you a long time to get well. And I think a lot about those 19th century novels where, of course, they're about upper class people, but 19th century novels where somebody gets sick and then they, you know, they take weeks to recover. They take months to recover. And that's actually how people recover. You don't, it takes a long time to recover from a physical illness. And it takes a long time to recover from 
emotional strain. It takes a long time to recover from, you know, some sort of trauma. And I've always loved the line, you can't push a river. You know, the river goes at the speed the river's going to go. And you can't push your own recovery. You can put yourself in a position to become more healthy, both emotionally, psychologically, physically, but you can't, you can't push those processes. And this is one reason, by the way, that this culture is not going to have a miraculous transformation where we're all crazy and killing the planet and then the age of Aquarius starts and everybody's happy and singing. Change doesn't happen that way. Change happens slowly. Things have to be metabolized. They have to be excreted. And those processes, we can't speed the process of recovery, but we can certainly slow it. And one of the ways we can slow it is by distracting ourselves all the time and not attending to what we have to do. I think I'm gonna switch metaphors here and I think about writing a lot because I'll get a germ of an idea and then I'll try to write it and it can't be written quite yet. And then I've got to, I've got to sit with it. And then the, the key thing though is that to switch metaphors is I have to, it's like fishing. I have to keep the line in the water and then I can't predict when the fish is going to strike. I can't predict when the story is going to strike. But what I can predict is if I don't keep the line in the water, nothing's going to happen. And so it's very easy to distract ourselves and to play Left for Dead 2 and to answer email and to look on Facebook and to do all sorts of things. And they all keep us from ourselves. They all keep us from paying attention to the things that are most important. And I think, I think boredom is a wonderful thing. And I think boredom is the predecessor of creativity that I do believe you have to sit. I don't mean just sit, you can walk around, you can take a walk through the forest, you can sit by the pond, but you're not going to, okay, here's, here's the, here's the truth is that there's a wonderful line from this, this uh, fantasy novel I read when I was a teenager the God will not speak to those who have no time to listen. And I have lived my entire life by that. That if you have no time to listen, you won't hear the trees and you won't hear your muse and you won't hear um, the voices inside that are helping you to heal. Um, those take time and they take lots of listening and you know, I, I, I have a lifetime of intractable insomnia, which, which um, has, has affected my life in many negative ways. But one wonderful way is that I will often lie there in bed doing nothing for an hour, two hours. And I can't tell you how many of my story ideas and how many of my book ideas and how many of my paragraph ideas have come lying there with no stimulation, just lying and it's a wonderful wonderful thing um so i think if people want to listen to the god then they need to have the time to listen and my mom really helped this when i was a kid i remember i went up to her one time and said i'm bored and she said great wash the dishes and after that you can go weed the garden and i learned to never again say to my mom that i was bored instead i would deal with my boredom by sitting around until something came and Today, I find this is one thing I hate about computers. It was so nice when my computer crapped out and I didn't have access to the internet for a couple of days. It was, it was delightful in terms of just I had so much more time to sit. 